You don't have to build a crazy shape animation rig. You don't have to model hundreds of shapes. You model one shape, upload it, identify some targets. You get your rig, you put it in here, take AR kit, make your animation, and now you've got a talking character that runs great on even mobile. Last month, I flew from New York to the beautiful city of Amsterdam to attend Unite. If you haven't heard of Unite, it's a conference hosted by Unity for thousands of game developers, where the company showcases the roadmap for the engine, has live sessions, demos some groundbreaking technologies, and most importantly, celebrates its amazing community. I also got to hang out with an amazing cast of content creators that you may recognize, and I've personally been a fan of for years. It's trips like this that reignite the fire and passion that I have for making games. But while spending time with the community was definitely my personal highlight of the entire trip, during the event, I was able to capture an interview of the one piece of tech that honestly blew me away. Ziva's facial motion capture. Check it out. Uh, originally started off as 40 catch. So put an actress, this is uh, Louise, put her on a stage like this, did a whole bunch of photogrammetry. That then becomes a single frame, looks something like this. And then from there, we get an animated mesh that looks like this. Yep. So this is extremely heavy. Uh, each frame is a unique mesh that's animating. Uh, for this two minute performance right here, it's, it's 1.8 gigabytes of Alembic data streaming it in real time. Great for a cinematic, not great for a mobile game. Yep. So from there, we took that performance, plus her whole range of motion performance, uploaded that to Ziva, to their, to their AI tool, which then creates an animated uh, or an animated rig that's one mesh that looks something like this. So now what's amazing here is these two look the same, but they're very different. Okay. This is a streaming in Olympic uh, file, 1.8 gigabytes for two minutes. This is one static mesh and all the animation has now been turned into from frame by frame animation to driving these markers. And what's amazing about that is 1.8 gigabytes 50 megabytes. Awesome. Driven by an AI. What's the coolest part about this though, is I can grab this guy here and start to animate on top of a 4D capture, which is rather unheard of. Uh, normally you have to just start all over, but I can like make her angry. And if I scrub the timeline, that anger persists. So we can modify and make wow. subtle corrections to a 4D captured performance that's way more lightweight, 50 megabytes versus 1.8 gigabytes. And it gets even better than that because every Ziva rig uses the same rig system, regardless of the topology of the face. Right. Even that crazy alien used the same, the same moving uh, uh, controllers. So I could do something like this. I could hide this character. I can unhide this character, which is Emma. And if I go to this version of Maya, I should now be able to scrub this. And we basically, by transferring the, the all of that animation of those markers from the one character to another, which is about one minute worth of work, I can then make her possessed by the other character. So it's the same performance, same facial animation, same talking, and I can then do the exact same thing I did before, which is alter that animation. It's like a retargeting system. That's, yes, I should have just said that. Gotcha. So yes. Retarget, retarget to any character. Um, so you don't really have to spend all this crazy money to do a 4D capture. There's also something you can do where you just take a static mesh, maybe that you've created or you've got your head scan at a show, whatever. You upload that to ziva.com or ziva dynamics, uh, run it through their face trainer where you identify some landmarks, do a little bit of work, takes about an hour. And without any work, any 4D data, we will send you back a trained rig that gives you all the fidelity. You know what, I'll just switch here. It's gonna take a minute to load. It's gonna take a sec to load. Sure. Um, but all I did here was started with a standard, a static mesh, and then we used the training data from the younger character, Emma, and we trained this character, which is something you can do today just by uploading your mesh, and I, I think it's still in beta, so it's, you can do it for free. Um, upload any mesh and get a an AI-driven rig that you can use AR kit to drive the animation on. So just sit there with your phone and go blah, 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 blah. Got it. And it'll update on the model. And you, you mentioned uploading my characters, that's a Ziva? 
So yeah, Ziva Dynamics. Is it's Ziva Dynamics like a separate entity or is that part of Unity? It's part of Unity. Okay. Uh, it's a company we acquired a couple of years ago. Um, they're not part of the weather umbrella, but all of their all their tools still reside on ZivaDynamics.com. Got it. Uh, and is so, there any plan to like transfer that over to something more Unity based? Yep, 100%. Got it. All right, I can tell it's a little slow because I've got all that other stuff running in the background. Sure. But essentially, I've got the same rig, except now instead of being in Maya, it's all inside of Unity. So, so the rig itself, does that have to be built in Maya? Like as, no. a, as a Blender user, like can I build that rig in Blender? Yeah, so Soon. Okay. Or just don't use Blender at all. <laughs> Do your modeling in Blender. Yep. You'll upload that face, your Blender, mo Blender created model, upload that to Ziva. Yep. We're gonna send you a Unity scene file which has the rig built in it. So okay. You don't, you don't have to build the rig at all. It's gonna look like this gives me the same control I had before, where I can animate it like that, but then I can also take these, these are all AR, uh, AR kit files that I created just using an iPad. It's gotta be, it's gotta have the LiDAR camera on it. So there's a, a, a free tool out there that does facial capture, saves it as an AR kit file. And then if I select the rig, and if I take this and drop it on here, this was me sitting at GDC recording some facial animation, and I just use Dropbox to send the files over. Um, it takes about 30 seconds or so to convert it. And what's cool about this is, so as a game dev, and it is running slow because I have a bunch of stuff running in the background, usually it's a lot faster. But as a game developer, if you're doing facial animation and you you got characters talking, a lot of the way that the, your your voice and your, your speech works is the way your face is shaped. And so even if you have a character who looks completely different, if you do an AR kit capture of your voice actors, performance and apply that to your alien, it's gonna look a lot more realistic because we'll get all those weird little ticks yeah. that made the sound come out of the mouth correct. So it's really the best of all worlds. If you don't have to build a crazy shape animation rig, you don't have to model hundreds of shapes, you model one shape, upload it, identify some targets, you get your rig, you put it in here, take AR kit, make your animation, and now you've got a talking character that runs great on even mobile. Awesome. Which is pretty darn cool. So. Uh, start off with very complex 4D data if you've got the got the resources. Otherwise, upload a static mesh, do some little bit of work, and you got a, an animated ray. Shout out to Mark from Unity for the great explanation and interview about Ziva. It's pretty clear to me how awesome it would be to have a retargeting system for facial motion capture. And then to be able to take facial motion capture and convert that into a retargetable rig sounds super helpful so that you can adjust the performance on the fly. Now Mark did mention that this is still in beta, and I do wonder how this compares to other motion capture out there like Rococo and iClone, but for those looking to take their animation game to the next level, this is definitely something to keep your eye on. Now what do you think? Have you ever heard of Ziva? And is motion capture something that you'd be interested in covering on this channel? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you again to Unity for having me. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.